All right, welcome back. You know, I never imagined that when I recorded these nap rituals that the results would come so quickly. But here we are again with another results video, this time for the protection ritual that was just released. It seems that the results are manifesting as I'm releasing these videos. But I listened to that protection nap ritual for a good solid week straight every night. Now, granted, I'm several weeks ahead of everybody else. It's not like, oh, I listened to it for a week and it immediately pops up. But, you know, a month, month and a half is still pretty good. To me, that's still pretty quick. Now, I didn't think I'd have anything to show for protection ritual results because typically when your magical protection is working, nothing happens. But in this case, Mother Nature had other ideas. We got clobbered by some of the largest hail that I've ever personally seen in my life. Larger than golf ball size and just a tad smaller than tennis ball size. And this area got rocked. And there is storm damage across the bi-state area tonight. Fox 2's Max Dignight joins us live from there, from the Clement Ford just off of I-70. And Max, how bad is the situation there? Surely really bad. Every car on this lot, I'm told, has been damaged. Take a look at the hail damage at these cars right behind us. Look at the windshield on this Mustang. It was hailing so hard here, and these hail pieces were so heavy, it knocked off the cover of that side mirror. And Take a look at this other car right by us. It looks like it hailed so hard, it's almost cratering in there. Again, I talked to the owner. He's been in this business for 25 years. He says he's never seen anything like this. I don't see a new car that's not hit. Everything looks like it's hit to some extent or another. You saw some of them that are demolished. Yeah, it looks bad. And they're not alone. The dealership across the street also sustained major damage to its fleet. And check this out. Just down the road at St. Dominic High School, the school was hit with near baseball-sized hail. Just look at their front lawn after the storm rolled through, littered with hail. They tell us the senior class's lot, they took the brunt of the damage. And take a look at the damage to the school's skylights. They had to rush to cover them up with tarps while it was still pouring down rain. Here's another windshield that stood out to us. Just take a look at how bad this damage is. This car, the side mirror also damaged. This part fell off. We just caught it on the ground as we were walking over here. I talked to the owner of another dealership who showed up to help his friend who owns this dealership. They're right down the road. They didn't have any damage. Just shows how isolated and how dangerous these storms can be and how hard they are to predict. Now, we only have a one car garage, which is something I didn't like about the house when we bought it, but we were having trouble finding anything with a 100% checklist of all of our wants, so we had to compromise. Now, my girl was at work, and she works all the way down in the city, so she wasn't around when all this went down. She normally is the one using the garage, while my vehicle sits outside. I don't mind. But then they started issuing thunderstorm warnings, and she wasn't here, so I thought, well, I'm going to move my vehicle in the garage because I just got it washed. I didn't want it to get wet. Little did I know what was about to happen. And I have a sunroof. <laughs> it would have got trashed. But moving my vehicle into the garage isn't the amazing thing. I'll get to that in a bit. But when the hail started, at first I thought it was the wind making the house creak or something. But as it picked up pace, it became apparent that something else was going on. Although I didn't think hail, because hail usually isn't so loud. But this was no ordinary hail. This was really large hail. And it was one of these storms that only affected a select area, which is nothing new to me, right? I have a buddy in the next town over, and I called him up asking him how much damage he had, and he didn't get anything. He said he was outside working on his car that day when it was going down for everybody else. I mean, nothing happened over there, and it's just right down the road. Now, the storm itself, when it went by us, was to the north. It didn't even really hit here directly. But on the southern corner, which was closest to us, it had one of those hook echoes, which is a warning that it could be tornadic. So they issued a tornado warning. And we know that hail often accompanies tornadoes. 
First on Fox, storms and tornado warnings dominate most of the day around our region. From hail in St. Charles County and lightning in Kirkwood, most of us saw severe weather. So when it started, the hail really wasn't coming straight down. It was being flung from the north at a more horizontal angle, more than 45 degrees even. It took a good chunk out of my neighbor's siding across the street. A lot of the roofs around here got damaged. Another neighbor of mine, his truck is completely dented up. It was coming down at such an angle that I was concerned that it could break out some windows. And when it was all said and done, we had very little to no damage at all. I went up on the roof and there were only like three shingles that had marks in them from it. And that's it. That's all we got. We're still waiting for the guy who did our roof to come out and take a look. Maybe he'll find something that I didn't, but that's all I'm seeing. Which, for what came down, is like nothing. I mean, just the sound it made hitting the house, I thought for sure the roof was going to be trashed. Three little dings, I'll take it. I think that's about as protected as you can get in that situation. And the vehicle that I pulled in the garage, the amazing thing is that when I went to pull it back out, it wouldn't start. The battery was bad. It wasn't just drained, it was bad. We took it up to the local auto zone and had it tested. And it wasn't even a year old. So they had to replace it because it was under warranty. But that means that I only had that one crank left to get it into the garage. <laughs> had it been bad and not started when I went to move it, as the storm was on its way, well, things would have turned out a lot worse, needless to say. So, yeah, it all worked out but just barely. The only thing that concerns me because it was such an unusual occurrence is did it create a situation to then protect me from? You know, I hope not. I mean, it's not unusual in the sense that that type of weather does occur this time of year. It's just being the size of the hail and being included in the limited scope of the area that it actually hit. That's the part that's unusual. I don't think that's the case, but I am on the lookout for stranger things. Now, in the last results video for the money nap ritual, you know, everybody was congratulating me on the win, which is much appreciated. However, I wasn't really too psyched about the prize itself. I was more focused on the fact that the ritual actually worked and worked well for your benefit. Because at this point in my life, the money isn't a big deal. Now, to many other people, I know it would be. And that's why I'm so ecstatic for the results that I've gotten. Because I know that it can really help people out by releasing it. Now, I did receive some comments on the nap ritual. Ola writes, so far found one pound in the street. That was day four. Sigh. And then later on goes to find 20 more pounds in the street. So it's working in dribs and drabs for him. But if you're actively searching, you're going to find less. I know it's kind of paradoxical to say keep your eyes open for any opportunities and for things to come across your path, such as money in the street, while at the same time saying that you need to get your mind off of it in order for it to manifest. Because they're both kind of true, but it's more important that you get your mind off of it for it to manifest. You know, if you had to do one, getting your mind off of it is the best way to go. And the way that the recordings are set up now, it really is the easiest, laziest form of magic that one can do. Because all you have to do is lay there and listen, you know, and recite or even mumble along with it as you're lying there listening to it. It's better that you practically fall asleep and not pay attention so much to it than it is for you to be fidgety, keep trying to get comfortable, try to remember and recite the lines along with it to be as perfect as you can be. No, it's just so much better to listen to it before you go to sleep and maybe even fall asleep while doing so than to be overly concerned about what to say, when to say it. Um, and it's fine if you do. Participation is always welcome. But the reason I say this is that when you're just practically falling asleep and not paying attention, that means you're relaxed. And that is key, which I really stressed that point in the last video, which if you're being too mentally active in your participation of it, then you may not be in a relaxed enough state. Okay, now the good news 
is that the more you listen to the nap rituals, at least in my case, the faster I get into relaxation. It's almost become a cue now for me to just drift off. So the more often you listen to them, the easier it should become. And again, I do them right before I go to sleep so that I'm already kind of naturally tired anyway. That really is the best time for it. So Gelator writes, Freight, I didn't catch it, but are you doing any of the safeguards before or after listening to these, or have you been taking your chances? I've been doing them as is. But again, I have many avenues open to me for things to reach me without causing issue. That would be the path of least resistance. I recorded them as they were written in the source material. And then he asked, will you record the safeguards as a preset and insert the nap rituals? Um, no, I probably won't do that. Again, because if I alter them, then they're no longer nap rituals. You know, I'm recording them as they're written. Now, I may insert safeguards when it comes to my own hypnosis program, which I'm currently working on, but I really don't want to alter the original material. I want to do it as written, as a companion piece to the book so people could follow along if they wish, or listen to it while they doze off. You know, whether or not someone wants to risk it is completely up to the listener because it's going to vary from person to person. Only they would know if they have like a wealthy relative and no other avenues for cash. You know, that's a stereotypical scenario because even though it has been known to happen, it is still quite rare that it does. I only brought it up because even though it doesn't happen often, it still is a possibility and therefore, I want you to have complete information and not have someone come back later saying it killed someone in their family or something. That I didn't warn them that that could happen. Um, yes, it, it can happen. That's why it's a stereotypical scenario. It has happened to people. But those people didn't have any other avenue for the ritual to work but to leave them an inheritance. I mean, anyone really concerned about it, I recommend doing a road opener, which we just performed in the Godform tier. So anyone included in that is good to go. And if you need to do one yourself, an orange candle with your statement of intent written underneath it, asking for more roads of opportunity to be open to you, and dressed in road opener or Van Van oil. So yeah, that's about it. I've really been into the recordings as of late, and I'm really starting to get into some of the good ones. So stay tuned for those as they're released periodically when they're not conflicting with other things in the schedule. All right, check out mindandmagic.com for programs and more, and I will see you next time. Take care. The Bi-State hit by hail as big as golf balls and baseball. Tonight, people on both sides of the river are cleaning up and assessing the damage. Mm -hmm.